The, the Istanbul principles came from the experiences, so it's been there all along. It's not something that they just, you know, came up with and start implementing after the open forum consultation. So it's something that they've been living by uh, since their uh, uh, founding or came coming into existence. Um, and definitely they've done a lot. Like, um, for example, um, the principle of solidarity, CSOs have long been working together and even come up to this point, you know, at the global, international level. The Istanbul principles are quite new and therefore um, there is not yet full implementation of the Istanbul principles, I would say, in any organization in Europe. However, we do have a couple of organizations that are currently uh, um, trying to see how they can implement the principles or include them in their work. So, for instance, the uh, French national platform, Coordination Sud, is doing a lot of work on that issue. Um, also, the um, platform of Scottish development NGOs, NIDOs, um, has been doing in parallel to the development of the Istanbul Principles actually, and they are trying to link their work with the Istanbul Principles. Well, there are quite a number of uh, countries where, uh, where CSOs have been involved in this process, where since the adoption of the Istanbul Principles in September 2010, there's been work already at how those principles can change or evolve the way we work. As Zambian CSOs, uh, we've always accord, especially for transparency and accountability among NGOs, and also that we should be answerable to the people, and uh, not only to the donors, uh, because uh, at times as NGOs, as civil society, we think we are only answerable to the people, the donors that give us funding, but we are also answerable very much to the people that we save on the ground, even those that live in the environment where we operate and they do not get funding. So we started talking about um, uh, self-regulation -re from way back as um, 1995, 1996, so that we could come up with a code of conduct that would regulate NGOs. So already we could see even before the Istanbul uh, principles or the Accra uh, declaration came into place, we, we were already talking about that. Hay varias. ¿Cuáles son las eh, acciones que se desarrollan en América Latina para implementar los principios de Estambul? Hay muchos campos de, de, de desarrollo. Diría que cada principio tiene distintas redes organizativas. Te voy a mencionar dos. Uno, por ejemplo alrededor del principio sobre la transparencia y la rendición de cuentas de las organizaciones sociales existe la red rendir cuentas que es una red eh, regional que eh, desde hace cuatro o cinco años está precisamente trabajando en la promoción de la rendición colectiva y pública de cuentas de las organizaciones sociales esto es un mecanismo de rendición y de promoción de la, de la transparencia entre nosotras mismas muy importante. Existe también, por ejemplo, alrededor de, de los temas de género y derechos de las mujeres, viejas redes en América Latina que están trabajando en este punto de manera muy crítica y muy propositiva. I think since since Istanbul the plan has has undertaken to to spread the word if you like to share uh, uh, to build some awareness around the Istanbul principles the process that underpinned them uh, but also to share the principles themselves we haven't yet progressed to the point of how they blend into our existing frameworks or replace our existing frameworks I I think like a lot of larger international civil society organizations there's a lot of uh, uh, familiarity or, or commonality between the Istanbul principles and our existing framework so it's it's likely that we won't try to replicate them but we will review our own existing quite large and hopefully robust systems for uh, compatibility we've had a lot of colorful discussions big debates around the issue of accountability and transparency because much as we civil society organizations 
adhere in principle to these principles. In practice, you know, given our many difficult contexts, we work with repressive governments, governments and military who hunt us down with the mere suspicion of being critical to the policies that they implement. So, you know, we cannot really be fully transparent. We cannot really be fully accountable if you're talking about upward accountability to, to governments and donors because some information may be may backfire against us and be used against our members and I think lives are more important than just numbers and reports. Well, I mean, uh, first the thing to say is I think the Istanbul principles establish a high watermark for civil society. They are, they are value-based, they're aspirational in many respects. I think they are true to our aspirations for our roles as development actors. So the first challenge we face is bringing back value statements of aspiration, important as they are, and as you say, how does that interact with the day-to-day -day lives of those who are managing or conducting program from Canadian NGOs? And, and they, uh, our members grappled with that a lot. But I think uh, increasingly in Canada, but also uh, I, I realize globally too, that there is more and more perception that human rights is the framework that drives our interaction with development and with those who are agents of development, people in the, in the South. And so the first priority, I think, for many of our members is to understand better what a human rights approach means. Um, the most important thing, I, I think, is to how to localize it uh, in the national context. And then that comes up with my second um, thought is so the importance here is the national contact. I mean the organizations that is involved in uh, all the process and bring it back to the country. Because if we cannot uh, do something very specific in our countries, then participating in the global or regional Agenda is not, it's not something that worth. The last principle, principle number eight, it talks about mutual learning and exchanges. And that is something that, if observed by civil society organizations, would naturally bring about the issue of, of them being able to talk to each other and learn from each other. Now, the implementation of that is what becomes a bit tricky. So there is need for very clear guidelines on how, what is it that we want to learn about each other and with who, but also the role of donors. Um, a rights-based approach is something CSOs are committed to, but within the broad scheme of development, uh, it's, not always, it's not always taken up as the preferred way to go, so that's a struggle. Okay, um, one principle that uh, civil society organizations need help in implementing is uh, the principle of human rights, I think, and social justice. It's not that they, they're not practicing it. Of course, CSOs are very determined to fight for human rights, but then the thing is, there are, in, in some contexts, in some countries, once you speak about human rights, you're dead. <laughs> like, um, talking from experience in the Philippines, um, human rights activists are often um, subjects of political repression, so different forms of political repression from harassment, abduction to political killings. So. Eh, ¿Cuáles son los principios que se encuentran como retos y aquellos en los cuales necesitamos ayuda particularmente? Hay una hay un hallazgo que tenemos en el periodo reciente que tiene que ver con que encontramos que el ambiente en general no es favorable a las organizaciones sociales. Es decir, lo que se llama un ambiente propicio, un ambiente favorable, en América Latina todavía tiene mucho trabajo por desarrollar. Hay países en los, donde los cuales las organizaciones sociales están seriamente amenazadas, sus líderes están siendo asesinados o están siendo encarcelados o puestos en prisión por eh, persecuciones de distinto tipo por parte de gobiernos o por parte de otros sectores. Ahí tenemos un gran reto. Crear un ambiente favorable para la organización social es algo en el que tenemos mucho que hacer en América Latina y en donde necesitamos apoyo de otras organizaciones del mundo.